Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about using the player prep system in Unity to save off your player or game state data and then reload that. So you can use this to just um, work as like save points for your player if you want to save off their position, the amount of money that they have, their top scores, anything like that that you want to persist just locally and uh, do it easily and quickly. So if you look at the player prep documentation on the Unity site, you can get a good idea of how and where this stuff stores. So like on uh, Windows Store apps, it goes into a player prefs.dat file. On Windows, it actually goes into the registry. Uh, Linux, it looks like it goes into this folder. And you know, it varies per uh, platform. So it's important to know where this is, but it doesn't really impact the way that you do any work with the system. You don't really have to know it, but it's it's good to know if you want to go digging around looking for this stuff. So en enough about this stuff. Let's start digging in and see how you use it. Now I'm going to jump over to some code here and a project. So we have a player script here. Uh, let's go to the project first, though. Let's take a quick look. In here, you'll see that we've got a capsule. This is our player. It's got a player script on it. Uh, the rest is just all the default stuff from creating a capsule. Oh, there's a canvas renderer that shouldn't be on there. Let's pull that out. And I'm going to hit play real quick, show you how this works, and then we'll look at the code behind it. So I hit play, and we should see the money start counting up. It looks like it started from about 1300 um, The name of my capsule is still capsule, and the position is still where it was. Now I'm going to move the capsule a little bit, so I'll just grab the X and drag it over here. And maybe I'll rename this to Jason. And I'm going to stop playing and look at the money when we stop. And then I'm going to hit play again and let's see what happens. That money should kind of resume where it was. You may notice that this guy bounced back over and the name is back to Jason. So this is all coming from the player prep system. Now let's take a look at the code and see how that works. So in our player, the first thing you see is that we have a player data object. I'm going to go into there. This just has a location, the name, the health and the amount of cash. Now you don't necessarily need a system that uses um, a, a data object like this for the state, but I have one here just to make it nice and clean and pretty simple. You could store just about anything in there. You don't have to use a data structure for this. Um, now in on enable, you see that we set the player data to the result of player persistence dot load data. Now this is just a custom static class that handles the loading. So let's go into there in our player persistence load data. Here, let's shrink this down a little bit. You see that what we're doing is calling player prefs .get float and passing in X. So this is getting us a float named X. We do the same for Y and Z. So we get X, Y, and Z. And you'll see in a second down here, we actually use that to create the location. We just have to create a vector three that's a location. There is no get vector three or set vector three. So we just use floats for that. We could also use a string and serialize it or something else, but three floats is pretty simple and just kind of works. Uh, we also get the health. The health is an int, so we use get int and pass in the string name there. Uh, for the name, this is the name of that object. Same thing, except we're using get string and passing in name. Now these names, by the way, do not have to match. It's just a coincidence of keeping the code kind of clean that they do. You'll see that when we do the sets just above. And then the same for cache, we're just getting it. Then I create a player data and we set the location to a new vector three based off of these three. Uh, we set the health, the name and the cache from the values that are there. And then we return back that player data. All right, let's go back into the player real quick. And you see that there we've got the player data. Then we just set the transform position to the location, set the name to the name. Now let's look at the saving state stuff. So in on disable, we call player persistence dot save data. Again, remember this is just a static class, little helper class that I made to make saving and loading simple and not be in this player class that shouldn't really be responsible for that. So we're going to save data. And again, you see that here we just call player prefs dot set float, give it a name and a float. And we do that for X, Y, and Z. Then for the string, we do name and pass in a string value. And then we have two ints for health and cash. And jump back over to the player one more time. In update, you'll see that we're just incrementing that cash by one. So that's why the money is just counting up, 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 up. And then we update the UI. This really shouldn't be in this class at all. It's just a method call though. And it's a demo, so don't worry about it too much. But in a real project, make sure that you're not updating your UI directly from your player class. You should have another script that's handling that kind of stuff. 
So again, we jump back in, you'll see that when we enable, we're doing that load. So we're pulling in all that data. And then when we disable, even if I uncheck this, we've saved the data off and I click again to re-enable and re-grab the new data. So that's really everything you need to know about the player prep system, at least how to, how to use it, how to set things, how to get things. Um, one extra little thing though is if you want to serialize a bigger object, like say you have an array of strings or you have a, um, a, a little data structure that's got a couple different parameters in it and you don't want to go through and set each one and set up a separate key for them. Uh, one trick I've used before is to just JSON serialize them. So use something like JSON.net or the built-in JSON ah, serializer. And then you set the string to the result of that serialized data. And then when you're loading it, you get that string back and then deserialize. And that works pretty well. I've used it quite a few times. Um, I said, I think it's better than doing like a loop of, you know, X underscore zero, X underscore one, just JSON serialize the stuff instead. And also um, don't put anything that you care about your players viewing or modifying in here because the players can go in and edit this stuff. You saw in the beginning where these files or where this data is saved, either in the registry or in a file on the system, depending on the platform. And uh, players can go in and modify this stuff, so don't put like your microtransaction purchases behind this without some extra validation at least. Don't put in uh, you know anything that you care about them modifying. If you don't care if they modify their, their cash value, then you know put it in there, it's fine, not a big deal. Maybe it's a single player game, they want to cheat, whatever. But if it's something super important, make sure that you, um, you know, don't just make it plainly available to them. So I hope this is somewhat helpful. Um, if you have questions about player prefs, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, this video was just from a request on a previous video. So if you have requests for other types of subjects, also just drop those down below. And then don't forget to like, thumbs up, uh, get notifications, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.